okay so now we will uh, one special notation so if omega in rn is an open set and with Lebesgue measure so this is the usual standard measure that we have on uh, Rn and its subsets then Lp of mu we will write as Lp of omega okay because we understand we don't have to specify the measure we know the measure is the Lebesgue measure we want to know what set we are doing working on and so we put the space Lp of omega similarly if you are working with R with Lebesgue measure and you have a b is an interval where minus infinity less than or equal to a less than b less than or equal to plus infinity it could be infinite intervals also then lp of mu so mu is Lebesgue measure okay lp of mu i will write lp of a b Okay, so this is just notation, especially when you are dealing with R or Rn. Okay, so now let us look at some examples, familiar examples. Okay, so now we take X is the set 1, 2, up to N. S is the power set of X, that means all subsets. Okay. And mu is the counting measure. That means mu of A is equal to the number of elements in A. And it will be infinite if A is an infinite set. Then what is integration with respect to mu? It's just summation. Okay, So it is just uh, integration of a function. A function on, uh, on x is nothing but a set of numbers 1, 2 up to n. So it is a n to pull and if you integration is nothing but adding the values. Okay, So that is the integration with respect to the counting measure. So every measurable function, every function is measurable because the we have taken all sets in the sigma algebra it is identified with the n tuple a1 a2 a n a i in r so this so therefore in this case lp of mu is nothing but our familiar ln p namely uh, rn with norm p which we have defined here so norm p of uh, a nor x x equals x1 x2 xn uh, is nothing but sigma mod xi power p uh, i equals 1 to n whole power 1 by p okay so this is and its max uh, and no, so norm xp norm x infinity equals max mod x so the finite dimensional spaces which we have seen are precisely lp spaces okay so next example x is the set of natural numbers and again s equals the power set of x all subsets and mu is again the counting measure So now you can immediately relate to what I am going to say. So Lp of mu is nothing but little Lp because a measurable function is nothing but a sequence so, um, uh, of numbers, real numbers. So f from x to r means it is a sequence f of 1, f of 2, etc. So it is nothing but a sequence and uh, integration with respect to counting measure is nothing but uh, a summation and therefore Lp of mu is nothing but little Lp. So in both these cases, only set of measure 0 
is the empty set. No other set has measure 0. Therefore, equality almost everywhere is the same as saying equality everywhere. So, equivalence classes are singletons. So, there is no real fuss. So, we do not this time we are really talking of functions only. We do not have any this. Okay. So, now proposition. So, let x s mu be a finite measure space. That means mu x is finite. Okay. Then L p of mu is continuously embedded in L q of mu. That means this uh, subset, this notation means it is a subset and the inclusion map is a continuous linear map. Okay. With whenever you have 1 less than or equal to q less than or equal to p. So, when p is bigger than q in a finite measure space, l p the bigger p is always contained in the smaller l q. Okay. So, proof. Okay. So, trivial if p is infinity because you have mod f q is nothing but less than or equal to norm f uh, infinity power q into integral over x d mu which is equal to norm f infinity times mu x which is finite and therefore you have norm f q is less than or equal to uh, power q is less than equal to mu x power 1 by q into norm f infinity and therefore this shows that the inclusion map is a continuous linear operator map and of course that l infinity is contained in every l q. So, now let us prove it for any so 1 less than equal to q less than p which is strictly less than infinity. Okay, so, f is in L p mu. Okay. So, now we apply so mod f to the q d mu. I am going to calculate see if this is a finite quantity. So, I am going to apply this Helder's inequality to this with the first function is mod f to the q, the second function is 1. Okay. So, if I apply that, so I will get this is less than or equal to Okay, uh, and since q is less than p, p by q is bigger than 1. Okay, so we, we can uh, apply Helder's inequality with the p by q as the index. So, it is less than the integral over x mod f to the q power p by q whole power q by p into integral over x d mu. 1 is to the power I do not care what it is, it is 1 minus q by p. Okay. Now, this is nothing but mod f to the p whole power q by p. Mod f to the p 1 by p is nothing but norm f p. So, this is norm f p uh, yeah. norm f p to the power q into mu x 1 minus q by p. Okay. So, we have norm f q that means I have to take the q -th root is less than to mu x to the power of 1 by q minus 1 by p times norm f p and that is finite and also this shows that the inclusion map is a continuous linear operator. Okay. So, now some 
other examples no such inclusion in infinite measure spaces so you have 1 by n the sequence 1 half 1 by 3 etc belongs to little l2 because sigma 1 by n square is finite that's pi square by 6 we have already seen okay so a 1 by n but 1 by n is not in l1 because sigma 1 by n is divergent okay so if something is in l2 doesn't imply it's in l1 if you have an infinite dimensional space example again okay no info information on reverse in reverse inclusions even in finite dimension finite measures even in finite measure spaces so you have that take the function 1 by root x this is integrable because if you can what is the integral of 0 to 1 of 1 by root x this is a non negative function so you don't have to take the modulus so this is nothing but 2 root x eval so this is equal to 2 okay so this is finite so f belongs to l1 okay but f square does not belong to l1 that is integral 1 by x dx 0 to 1 is plus infinity and therefore you have f is not in l2 f square is not integrable so f is not in l2 so uh, you don't have any reverse inclusion l1 does not imply small lp does not imply big lp however example again let 1 less than equal to p less than q less than equal to infinity okay then little lp is continuously embedded in little lq so you do have the reverse inclusion in the little lp case alone in in finite though this is this is there's nothing can be said okay uh, it's completely free there's no uh, method by which you can estimate these things so uh, it happens sometimes it won't happen sometimes so even in finite measure space you don't have the reverse inclusions namely small lp uh, does not be belong to a bigger lp but in uh, this infinite measure space lp and lq uh, you you do have this thing and not only that you have the norm x in lq the bigger one is less than norm x in lp for all x in it okay okay proof so let us take q equals infinity okay so x in lp implies x is bounded because sigma mod uh, x power xi power p is convergent that means a convergent series the terms are all bounded and therefore x x belongs to l infinity okay and norm x mod xi for any i is less than or equal to sigma mod xi power p whole power 1 by p which is equal to norm x p and therefore if you take the soup you get norm x infinity is less than or equal to norm x p okay sigma j equals 1 to infinity mod x j because this is only one term in this thing and therefore it is you have this so now let us assume 1 less than equal to p strictly less than q less than infinity okay so again sigma x in lp so sigma mod xi power p is convergent so this means that xi goes to 0 
Therefore, there exists an n such that for all i begins equal to n, you have mod xi less than or equal to 1. So, mod xi power q if i is beginning equal to n is equal to mod xi power p mod xi to the q by p. Okay, I am just writing. And since xi is less than or equal to 1, so this is less than mod xi power p. Okay, so sigma i equals 1 n to infinity mod xi power q is less than or equal to sigma i equals n to infinity mod xi power p that is less than the full series so that is less than strictly less than plus infinity and therefore this implies sigma i equals 1 to infinity mod xi power q after all you are only adding a finite number of terms is less than plus infinity and therefore you have that lp is a subset of lq okay so now for the inequality so assume norm xp equal to 1. So this is sigma mod xi power p i equals 1 to infinity equal to 1. So this implies that xi is less than or equal to 1 mod xi for all i. Okay. So sigma mod xi equals 1 to infinity mod xi to the q is equal to sigma mod xi to the p into sigma uh, mod xi uh, sorry into mod xi to the uh, q minus p this is all less than or equal to 1 so this is less than or equal to sigma so this is i equals 1 to infinity i equals 1 to infinity mod xi power p and that is equal to 1 ok. So, you have this is true. So, now given any x you take x by which is not 0 obviously x by norm x p. Its norm is 1 and therefore by whatever we get therefore that norm x q ok. So, this implies that norm x q is also less than or equal to 1. So, norm q of this is less than or equal to 1 that is norm x q is less than or equal to norm x p. Okay. So, uh, this proves so these are some set of examples which we have. So, now we will look at some further properties important ones about LP spaces in this 